Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Fox again and today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my League Start characters for uh, 3.7 for Legion. Now before I start I do want to let you guys know that I have four builds listed here but I'm only going to give you two build guides. Uh, the other two characters, one of them is an RF character. I'm just updating for you guys because I know a lot of you guys want me for RF but I don't want to play it but I did update a tree for you so you can just plug that in and start playing it. And the other one is a character I may go to a little bit later. It's probably going to be a more off meta thing. It's going to be Glacial Hammer. So I'll talk about those briefly. Um, but the main focus is going to be on the two hand Slayer Infernal Blow and the Berserker. And then remember one other thing to note is that there's not going to be any gameplay as these are brand new and the league's not out yet. Um, so let's start with the Infernal Blow character. Now. For both of the characters, I have set up a notes tab so that uh, well, TLDR, you should basically read it. Since the path of building doesn't have the updated gems, I've put in some information here to kind of explain what you're going to do. We'll talk about this in a minute. Let's first start with the tree. <clears throat> I'm going to first explain the ascendancy and then I'm going to go into the tree. So the reason why I decided to pick Slayer is because number one, impact. Um, Infernal Blow is a skill that previously really needed a ton of area to actually do anything. Now you can actually scale the area, which will scale the explosion, and you can scale striking. Well, it's because it's tagged as a strike skill, it scales with um, melee weapon and uh, well melee weapon attack range. Uh, also, the goal is going to be to get enough weapon range slash AOE so that we don't need to use Ancestral Call, uh, so then we can fit in another multiplier gem. Uh, furthermore, we also get Headsman, which just gives us 10% more damage if we've killed recently. This is good because it'll work for all aspects of Infernal Blow. Melee Physical does not scale the... There's two explosions on Infernal Blow. There's one that scales off your weapon hit, which Melee Physical works for that. But then there's the Percentage Max Explosion, which is basically fire and AoE and not melee weapon damage at all. Um, so this is nice because it works for that, and it gives us more damage against unique enemies, which is going to be probably our biggest issue um, with Infernal Blow would be single target. Not saying it will be, but um, this would help with that situation. Bane of Legends also gives us Culling Strike at 20%, um, and we get 20% attack speed whenever you kill a rare unique enemy. That's pretty okay, but the main reasons I take this is the call and the 20% increased movement speed for 20 seconds, which stacks with Onslaught, because this is not Onslaught anymore. But more importantly, this is whenever you kill an enemy, any type of enemy. You know, whenever you enter a boss room, there's going to be enemies. So this is something that you're looking at 100% uptime on. So for Uberlab, you've got three choices. I decided to take Overwhelm, mainly because it buffs up our critical strike chance. We're not taking it for the crit multi at all. This is an elemental overload build. But having an 8% base skill means we pretty much need no investment in crit. We always have Ellie Overload with decent attack speed. Um, and plus you'll probably get a tiny bit of crit here or there just randomly. And then nearby enemies have minus 30 crit multi. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this or not, but base monster critical strike multiplier is 1.3, which means this completely disables critical strike from monsters with no mods, I'm pretty sure. Um, they can still inflict like an ailment and everything, but this pretty much removes the damage multiplier. So I pretty much take this strictly for quality of life slash damage reduction. You could go for Massive Form for extra end like endurance charge duration. You could also take Endless Hunger for the, over for the uh, huge leech buff but that's up to you. Um, yeah, you can also play this as a gladiator. Naturally, it would be the more defensive variant, but I want to start off with the league with like a good damaging character, so I'm going straight in the Slayer. So let's start with the 1 to 20. Um, so starting off, I decided I'm going to go down the maximum life route. You can totally come down the attack speed. Um, I mean, I probably would go down the attack speed, but I really like the base life from here, so that's the reason why I chose this. Um, for early game, it may be better to get the attack speed and then swap later. Uh, coming down into Master of the Arena. This is one of our melee weapon and unarmed attack range bonuses I was talking about. Then you grab Art of the Gladiator, which helps with that accuracy we're going to need later. Uh, ignore all movement penalty from armor. I really value movement speed efficiently on the tree, so I'm always looking for nodes like this specifically. Uh, moving downward, we grab Destroyer. You can path through the attack speed if you prefer as well. Uh, over here we've got Golem's Blood, and I'm not going to pick up Jewel's early game because it's unrealistic to have a really good Jewel early game, especially if you're playing like SSF. So moving into the 20 to 40, uh, you can see we have now branched out, so I've grabbed uh, Harvester of Foes. This is a really nice accuracy cluster. It's also going to give us attack speed while leeching, uh, which I'm not sure if we can really make use of that leech yet. Um, that's the one thing with this build is I think 
bleach may be a little bit difficult to come by, but let me see, we'll check in a second. Um, it's also just a good, pretty good damage node in general. Then we move down, we grab Lava Lash. Lava Lash gives us that huge fire damage uh, with weapons, which is we're going to be Avatar Fire with the build, so it's going to be awesome. If you don't want to pick it up early, you don't have to. Super sick damage node, though, once you're full conversion. I also go into full Fortify effect on this character. That means we grab every Fortify node on the tree. It ends up being a total of 60% increased Fortify effect, but only 50%, the other 10% is while standing still. Uh, it also gives you 5% increased movement speed while you have Fortify, so again, with that movement speed that I really like. And then we get Early Wrecking Ball and Executioner, which should make the build feel really nice on scaling. Um, don't mind this, you're not supposed to have both. I'm going to take Impact to see how much of a difference it makes for our AoE. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very significant. Okay, moving into the 41 to 60. Um, that's not supposed to be there, don't mind that point. Um, so we actually go ahead and start going up here. This is one of the new crazy nodes uh, in the game. Basically what this does is it gives you 5% physical mitigation, which is more than an endurance charge, and it gives you plus one to maximum all alley res. Um, and then the baby nodes reaching to it give you 10% alley res. So even if you don't use armor, this is still a great node to come by if you're close to it. It's essentially almost unbreakable in a node from Juggernaut. So moving forward, we come over here and grab full fortify. The reason why I picked up the baby nodes, both of them, is because it, they both gave effect to fortify. Uh, moving across into warrior's blood, let me just put this point here and save this new tree. And then for our cruel lab, we do pick up headsman. So 61 to 80, we pick up bane of legends for that call. Moving up, grabbing butchery for the three points. Moving across, getting this jewel since it's a one pointer. Um, starting to pick up scion life wheel. Moving into 81 to 100, I can see we're grabbing Discipline of Training here, grabbing some more Ellie Res, and Divine Fervor is pretty nice for the Ellie Pen. Uh, Devotion's super good since it's one travel point into life. Well, I mean, this is kind of like two travel points, but it's pretty decent. Uh, starting to move over to Ellie Overload. Now, if you feel that you are ready for Ellie Overload, you should absolutely pick it up pretty much whenever you want. It's, it's a 40% damage multiplier. It's the whole reason why you're not going Resolute Technique. And then 101, this pretty much just fills in the jewels. Um, we pick up Alley Overload. If I zoom it out for you and scroll over here, you'll see. Oh, sorry, there's one thing I did miss. The one thing I did miss is uh, Brinksmanship. I mess this up when doing it. I would pick up Brinksmanship probably right when you go along it, just because it, it gives that melee weapon and unarmed range that we're kind of looking for. So scratch that and pick this up pretty much. I would grab this instead of Lava Lash, leave Lava Lash till later. Um, and then we also pick up our Endurance Charges. Endurance Charges you pretty much pick up whenever you feel you're ready for them. And then there is one other tree that I want to link here, which is the Avatar Fire Tree. So naturally for this build, you're going to want 100% conversion. So whether you acquire that through Nagamu's uh, Flame Axe or Zoff's Blood, those are going to be your two choices. A third choice is just simply, instead of routing this way, you would route to the left, drop some jewels or drop like Precision that I acquired. Um, come up, grab Avatar of Fire, and you actually get a little bit more life with this tree, so they're both very friendly. You can see I dropped the two-point jewel over here. Okay, so to talk about the items that we're using, this is not going to be like an end game or anything. Uh, this is not going to show the resistance. I don't really use Path of Building for that. Uh, I basically use this to give you an idea of how to get the character going um, so you understand how to scale it. So this is the axe I was talking about, <coughs> which is Nagamu's Flame. Uh, it gives 50% conversion. It also gives 20% uh, Fire Pen. And we also get the Molten Burst. I'm not really trying to scale the Molten Burst, but it should add some damage in general to our character. Uh, I don't know what our best in slot endgame weapon is going to be. I don't really play physical damage builds 100%, but I mean, ideally, you're, you're aiming for some of the highest physical damage per second that you possibly can uh, on a weapon, so it's probably going to end up being a rare crafted weapon. I decided to go with axes because axes have so many uniques in general that you can use. Um, right away. So for example, like here are some more expensive, like not really easy to acquire ones, but some other ones you can use. There's like Kingmaker, uh, Katava's Feast, Combs Primacy is super budget. You find it right away. Um, this is going to cost nothing. You also have Hezmana's Bloodlust. These are all about like 350 to 400 physical damage per second. Um, so this character with a belly and I would say mediocre life rolls on some stuff, like 75 life on helmet, you can get much more. Uh, 65 life on gloves. Uh, we are using spiked gloves for the melee damage. 
65 life on these boots. Um, I started putting some strength rolls in here. You're going to be looking for, ideally, I have flat physical on the amulet, but I'm pretty sure wed is going to be your main go-to since you already have a big hit. You want to scale your big hit rather than add flat fizz. Uh, flat fizz is still going to be important, and then after that would probably be added fire to attack, so that should be like your little trio. Um, wed, flat fizz, and... Uh, uh, wed, flat fizz, and... Uh, fire damage to attacks, but that, that one's not really going to be very important. Uh, I've got two opal rings, although I don't know if steel would be better since it's like a small increase versus a big flat fizz. Uh, Path of Building will easily tell you once you like actually import your character and actually test the numerics. Just the standard leather belt, nothing really too crazy here. And then for our jewels, I decided to plug in some jewels so you can see what kind of stats you're looking for. You've got physical damage with axes, melee damage, area damage. Uh, global physical damage, increased physical with two-handed melee weapons, 5% attack speed. I think I have a, a uh, here we go, like a Abyssal Jewel if you want one like that. There's attack speed, flat fizz. You can get penetration too. I don't know how useful that's going to be. Uh, and then of course life as a prefix would be really important. So to go over some of the notes here that I put in, uh, and actually before I do the notes, I'm going to just go over the skill. So we're going to be using Infernal Blow naturally, and I want to talk about the skills that you'd be using or support gem. So you've got Infernal Blow. You'll probably use Ancestral Call at the beginning. Um, I'm not really sure. Nobody really knows how big our AoE is going to be. If you really don't need this, pretty much right after grabbing your uh, impact and uh, melee AoE, you can just drop it immediately. But I'm probably going to use it just to see at the beginning. You got Ellie Focus. Um, you may not have the intelligence for Ellie Focus right away because a lot of our intel on our tree we grab like up here. So you definitely like could use that as like a more like six link option. Uh, melee physical is going to be really good, but melee physical is actually something we want to replace because it doesn't scale the explosion. Multi strike should synergize really well with this, uh, just for the bonus attack speed and the way it works with its new mechanics, where it does more damage, but you attack not slower, but slower than previously. Uh, Ally damage with attacks is your go-to. This would be like number one, for example. And then fortify is sitting in here because it now gives a multiplier to melee physical. Even though it doesn't double dip with the explosion, it's still going to be really, really good in my opinion. Um, and it's going to be our main link because we're specking completely into fortify and it's a huge survivability boost for us. So I want to go into the notes right now because there's some pretty important stuff in here that I want to talk about. Um, so one thing I do want to bring up is this new support gem called Pulverize. So Pulverize states that supported skills deal 34% more area, which makes me feel like I could drop Ancestral Call for Pulverize. And then it says supported skills deal 45% more area damage, so or more melee damage, sorry. Or I could just drop this with melee physical. So this is definitely something I am absolutely going to play around with is the Pulverize support. So coming into this, uh, our auras we're going to run. Got Herald of Ash, that's 25% reservation for a percentage of our physical added is fire. Also helps with a bit of clear for the uh, overkill explosion. Um, there's a new stance, so I think it's Blood and Stone. <clears throat> By running Stone Stance, I think it's, is it this one here? Flesh and Stone, sorry. So Flesh and Stone makes it so that nearby enemies are blinded while in Sand Stance. And you take 11% less damage taken from enemies that aren't nearby while in Sand Stance. So basically by having it on, any enemy that tries to hit you, like ranged mobs, it reduces the damage. I don't know if we can have flesh and stone and, isn't there another stance here, and blood and sand? I'm not sure if we can have both, but if we can, that's awesome. Blood and sand basically just gives us another buff. Um, so this is something I forgot to add into, but this is definitely a really good one. Melee skills deal 15% more area damage with less area of effect, and vice versa, more AoE with less. So, Blood and Sand. I think I got these confused. I'll just put this over here. And then this one was Flesh and Stone. Okay, uh, next up you've got War Banner and Precision. I put these in here because, as explained earlier, uh, we are going to want to run Ali Overload, so Precision would give you flat accuracy and percentage crit chance. It also only reserves a flat amount of mana, meaning gearing up into it can be very accessible for a lot of builds. And War Banner uh, increases accuracy and gives us an active, which is Adrenaline, which gives you the main thing to note is the increased damage, attack speed, and physical damage reduction. Um, 
Also, if you don't want to run this setup, you can also just simply be simple and run last wave flammability, which reduces the enemy fire res, so that's pretty good as well. It also works for the last explosion of Infernal Blow. So to talk about the survivability of the character, if you look here, you can see you're going to be over 6k life. Uh, you got 6k life with 50% fortify effect. This totals to 30% reduced damage, uh, unless my math is incorrect. You get Soul of Steel on the tree, which is 5% physical mitigation and plus one max all res, incredibly strong node. The occasional adrenaline if you choose to use War Banner, which would really only be on like that spooky rare or uh, big boy boss or like map boss. Five endurance charges you should be able to keep up at all time. That's 20% phys mitigation. After Uber Lab, you get the 30% crit damage reduction to enemies. So another really, really good point. Uh, I also wanna check one thing on the tree here. Okay, yeah, never mind. Back to my skills. Oops. There we go. Uh, the only thing you're really going to have to focus on is getting a bit of leech. You can decide to just take Slayer for the overkill leech, but I, I assumed basically with my damage reduction I'd pretty much be okay. Um, but I will try to acquire some sort of leech. Maybe I'll just run like cast some damage taken Warlords or something with Warlords, or maybe an Elder Ring with Warlords Mark would probably be a goal for the character. <clears throat> Steel Skin is uh, one of the new guard skills. When you use it, it reduces the damage you take by 70% up to a maximum of the number. At max level, it's 2200. That's just at 20 before any buffs. Uh, and I think this will work really well with our layers of defense, essentially. Uh, this basically just explains, but pulverize what I told you guys before. And then this pretty much just goes over the avatar fire and everything else. So that's pretty much the character. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll give you more information because it's most likely going to be my league starter. Uh, but with that being said, your bandits are most likely going to be kill all. And I'm going to go to the next build. Oops. Okay, so the next guy I want to talk about is the Bowserker. Now, the Bowserker, if you guys are unaware, let's go ahead and talk about the nodes on the Bowserker. So, Berserker now... If you look, there's a bow right here. The reason why there's a bow is because Berserker is the only way to play Berserker. <clears throat> so we're most likely going to start off normal lab by getting Crave the Slaughter. This will allow us to generate rage with a bow, so we don't have to be melee at all in any type of way. Um, and then for Cruel Lab, we're most likely getting Flawless Savagery. This gives us quite a bit of crit and a huge flat fizz. Uh, flat fizz is very, very, very nice. For Merc Lab, we'll be going into Blitz, which gives us 40% more attack speed, but uh, you'll end up losing 200% increased crit. This right here gives us 110% crit. So this is actually lower than a Controlled Destruction Gem, if you need to think about that. And then Rite of Ruin will be our Uber Lab, which gives us stun immunity, and then having the effects of Rage is tripled, so that's going to be super, super crazy. It's like 150% increased damage, 75% attack speed, and 30 movement speed, I think. Okay, so to start with the character, we're going to go 120. Now, this is this is a build that I really want to play because I've always wanted to play pure Fizz characters, and I always felt it wasn't very good. I didn't really play too much of the Impale meta, so this is why I want to be playing it right now, because it's an Impale character. Uh, so naturally, our leveling might suck at the beginning because we got to get life right at the start, um, and then eventually we branch over to Swift Skewering. Now, there's this one Impale node right here. You most likely will not use Endgame because you can hit 100% Impale chance without it. Uh, but for now, we just are basically rushing Impale Chance because I feel that this is what we're going to need to bring the character out. Um, so after this, you can see we are now going over to the left. So 21 to 40, you can see us coming over here, grabbing Forceful Skewering for the extra Impale. You can choose to grab Iron Grip really whenever you get enough strength that you feel it's worth it. Um, it also grabs Soul of Steel early. This is just because I'm playing on Hardcore and mainly because it gives 10 Ellie Res and the Soul of Steel is godly. So mainly the... 10 alley res early game helps a lot though. Uh, you can see this is the one part of the tree I really dislike, which is this little highway that you have to make here. Um, there's also leech right here, which makes it really accessible right away. Even though this says one-handed, um, if you look, it just says attack damage leech this life. And then this is, <clears throat> again, attack damage leech this life with total recovery. And then Gladiator's Perseverance is 0.6% attack damage leech this life maximum total recovery and then it just says attack or sorry it says increase attack damage while leeching so this is kind of nice because we don't have to be melee we don't make the best benefit of it or use of it but it's still good uh, anyway though we're going to move down grab golem's blood for this good regen this should allow us to run blood rage really early uh, you get access to fury bolts which is really nice uh, and then you can see here we do take 
crave the slaughter, mainly because we don't get crit until the right side of the tree. The only crit you can get is Eagle Eye. So 41 to 60 is the next one. You can see here I've grabbed Art of the Gladiator and Bravery. Now, I'm pretty sure I removed these later, but because you're early game and you don't really have any damage, it's probably best that you pick up Deadly Draw and Heavy Draw. Um, I've also moved across and grabbed Dazzling Strikes. You don't really have to grab this early. Um, I plan on using Tornado Shot, so that's the reason why I grabbed Dazzling Strikes, but you don't really have to grab this early game just because you may not hit fast enough to really make use of it. So consider getting something like Farsight. And then you can see for here we are, well next one we'll take it. Okay, to zoom out a little more, 61 through 80, we are pumping our way over to Ranger, coming through Thick Skin, grabbing Long Shot, actually a crazy note on the tree. It gives, uh, if you look here, 20% projectile attack damage with up to a max of 40%, so 60%, 70%, 84% projectile damage uh, with three nodes. Uh, you can also grab insane movement speed right here. You've got three and three is 6%, plus fleet flood is five, so this is 11%, along with cooldown recovery of movement skills and 10% attack and cast speed if you've used a movement skill recently. Um, coming over here for lethality for the crit, Moving up, now you do have access to Vitality Void, Spirit Void, and if you're really mana hungry, Essence Sap, but you probably won't ever need more than this until you get like Elrion Crafted Jewelry, because Blitz is going to make you go attack so fucking fast. Okay, moving into the 81 to 100, you see we pick up King of the Hill, uh, grab the Acrobatics and Phase Acrobatics. Now at this point, uh, I also decided to start going into the Scion Life Wheel, so I'm going to move in the 101 plus. Now for the 101 plus, you'll notice I have done a little bit of changing um, and respecking of some things. I basically moved this cluster and I dropped out of Art of the Gladiator and I really would like to get Art of the Gladiator, but the thing is, is I decided to trade it for piercing shots because this way I can run Tornado Shot and I don't have to run a Lionized Vision. Uh, I can use like a Rare Crafted Gear, but this is kind of up to you how you would like to do this. Um, I don't really know how much I'm going to value the Pierce. I want to use Rain of Arrows, but I'm pretty sure Tornado Shot's just going to be significantly better. So it's a little bit of a work of progress at this point. So to go over the items on this character, now we're also doing Alira, not Alira, we're going to be doing... Oh, Alira would be okay, but I don't know. I feel like passive points are really strong at this point. I'm probably going to take passive points, but Alira's pretty decent. So for here, ideally you're going to want to craft a Harbinger Bow, Harbinger bow for yourself. Um, you're going to want something like percentage fizz, hybrid fizz with flat fizz, and then of course attack speed, crit chance, crit multi. Not really going to be very easy to roll at the beginning of the game. There are some budget unique bows like Death's Harp and Death's Opus. They're both pretty good. Uh, so that's one thing to note. Now also with the skills, I'm going to go back to items here in a second. I did state that I'm going to use six link tornado shot, but there's another skill I'd really like to use. Um, and just to give you like a little sneak peek of it right here, I have to find it actually. It's called Puncture. So Puncture, they just recently buffed, and I want to explain I want to explain the, the insanity of this buff. So if you guys are familiar with Abyssus, Abyssus adds 40 to 60 physical. Puncture at level 20 gives 75 to 113. So that's basically like two Abyssus, but on your bow. Um, so Puncture is definitely something I want to work into, but the problem with Puncture is I don't know how the single target would be, and more importantly, the problem with Puncture is to really make Puncture work, um, you're gonna need to use Hemophilia gloves. In, in general, I think for, well yeah, for Puncture, you're gonna need Hemophilia because Hemophilia will make it so Puncture bleeds every hit and then every single thing that's bleeding will explode. And then since you have Pierce, we'll just shoot and the whole pack will explode. So this is something kind of nice to think about um, for clear for sure. So to go back, I'm using Tornado Shot, GMP, Brutality, Maim, Mirage Archer, and Vicious Projectiles. Um, it's really hard to say what to swap with what. Um, I do believe there was a support gem, a new one that was added here. I don't remember, but I'll look in the uh, notes because I have that written up. Um, but again, you can also try using like Split Arrow, Rain of Arrows, etc. I'm pretty sure, unfortunately, Tornado Shot ends up being superior to it. Uh, but for leveling, you could absolutely just use like Split Arrow or, or Rain of Arrows. Um, so let's go back to the items. We're looking for flat fizz anywhere we can get it. So here's a flat fizz uh, broadhead quiver. Um, again, looking for that life, flat fizz, attack speed, crit multi, uh, crit chance. 
I think we're ideally going to want full evasion on the character, because if you look at the tree, we get about... How much evasion do we get? 100% evasion. Um, I mean, 100% evasion, 100% armor, so it's really up to you how you want to do it. I'd probably say evasion's a better bet, because it's acrobatics, and... Oh yeah, don't don't go armor, go, go evasion, because acrobatics. We're not trying to stack armor. <clears throat> Uh, you can see with... Oh, you can also stack Strength, which is nice because we're Iron Grip, so Strength helps get the life up quite a bit. Um, flat Fizz on Amulet. Remember, you're not looking for Wed at all because Wed does not really help you in any type of way with this build. You're pure Fizz. Uh, steel Rings. I've just got a Leather Belt. Uh, some Viridian Jewels. I mean, that would be pretty nuts if you could find something like this, but probably not. Just Flat Fizz would be on Abyss Jewels, so that's another thing to take into account. So to go into the notes, because it explains quite a bit about here, um, I want to talk about the auras. So Flesh and Stone makes it so while you're in Sand Stance, you take 11% less from non-nearby enemies, which should be like pretty much everything in the game. Uh, Herald of Purity is going to give us nice flat fizz. I kind of don't want to have to use this because I really don't like minions in PoE, especially if I'm playing ranged, but I don't think there's anything to replace this yet. Dread Banner gives that 20% Impale chance. Um, oh, now I remember the Impale Support Gem. Well, here we go. It's the next. Um, this gives us 20% Impale Chance, plus we get 50% Impale Chance from the tree, and the new gem, Impale, puts us overcapped on the Impale, so you can actually remove the Impale node I was talking about. Precision gives us a flat amount of accuracy uh, and gives us the Critical Strike Chance, so another really nice gem or aura to consider running. <coughs> so Impale is a new gem that I'm going to show right over here. Uh, it basically gives us Impale Effect, which is pretty much mandatory because we're playing an Impale build. Also gives that 40% chance to Impale and 15% more physical, so it's even like not necessarily that bad. And I'll probably drop Vicious Projectiles for that. Um, so going to the next one, Rain of Arrow is another option. We explained that. I don't really recommend Bleed. Uh, GDG even said it's a work in progress on their side. The only thing I really recommend Bleed for is using like Bleed Hemophilia, Bleed Explosion, or like Gladiator Bleed because... Bleed is a pure physical mechanic that doesn't scale off elemental. Impale is a pure physical mechanic that doesn't scale off elemental. Impale is literally meant to do damage. Bleed is meant to make you cry and bleed because it's just not up to par yet, unfortunately. Maybe some people make some okay things, but you just have to like over gear like crazy to do any single target. Um, so I'm going to talk about some new mobility and active skills. So I talked about these on the previous guy, but dash this is uh, oh i forgot to put dash on the two-handed guy so this gives us a nice reposition skill it's instant cast you can basically mirage archer and then i'm pretty sure just dash out of the way so this is something that's going to be super nice <clears throat> then you have stone skin which allows us to just absorb the damage you know if you see something coming tap your stone skin uh, berserk is going to be a fat damage reduction um, along with multiplier and attack speed now the reason why we get to use this active gem is because as a berserker we generate rage with attacks the berserk gem is actually only for melee so this gives us another advantage for being ranged where if something gets close to us or we're at a boss fight or we're trying to face tank we can hit that berserk button it's gonna be real nice um, and then at the bottom text here, you can play this build as a Slayer if you want, totally. You can even play it as a Gladiator with Bleed Explosion, and it would work, actually. So um, the only reason I'm going Berserker over Slayer is for the amount of attack speed. This should make Mirage Archer a total beast, and I really want to see a fast Mirage Archer because I feel like it doesn't do it justice when it attacks slowly. Okay, so that's pretty much those two characters, for the most part, talked about. Uh, next, I do want to go ahead and talk about the other two characters. So to just um, glance over them, here is the Righteous Fire character. Um, I have picked up... Uh, well, I'm playing this as Jug, but you can absolutely play it as Chieftain. Um, Chieftain would get, for example, Namahu's... F no. You would get... I don't even know what you'd get for Chieftain. Let's see. You'd, so you'd start off with... Cleansing water for the physical damage hits taken as fire and the huge recovery. And then you'd probably go, what, like... Tawaho's Forest Strength into Velako's Storm Embrace, maybe? Yeah, for the Endurance Charge region. And then, and then you probably will get, like... I mean, you could just take Arahanagui's Moon Presence and use, like, a Searing Bond Totem or something. You could use a Scorching Ray Totem, but it's probably better for you to use Scorching Ray yourself. So if you just use like a Scorching Ray Totem, it would 
give you a little multiplier of damage, so that's something you can run. I don't know, unless you want, like, I don't think this works for you. Anyway, though, let's talk about the tree, because that's pretty much what the, all this is about. So, uh, from 1 to 20, you can see I'm starting to go down like this. Now, I do believe I decided that I was going to run into um, Diamond Skin and the Elirez, because this is actually pretty nuts for what it gives. Gives a ton of resistance and armor, but early game you don't really need the percentage values except for the flat resist. So, um, but yeah, we decided to pretty much rush Soul of Steel because Soul of Steel gives you that plus one max fire res that you're gonna want. Uh, and then the next goal is gonna be going for Barbarism for that extra plus one fire. And then of course you can grab your life regen on endurance charge. We pick up Arsonist. It was buffed. There's another zero point life regen node here. Combat stamina. Uh, and now we're pushing towards, I think, Shaper, it is? Yeah, grabbing Shaper, moving down to grab our Constitution, and then moving up, this will help with Scorching Gray Mana Cost, early game, moving up into the Devotion, grabbing Holy Dominion and more Life Scaling. Going to the 61 to 80, you can see we grab Ellie Overload, we grab Sanctity, moving up, we get Quick Recovery, there's our one point Jewel. Uh, I decided to come over and rush into Holy Fire because it'll help you with that damage. Don't pick up Ellie Overload until you really feel you can like bring out how good it is. For for this, I definitely would recommend using Stormbrand. It makes it really easy to set up Ellie Overload. Uh, for the 81 to 100, you can see we're pretty much filling in life nodes. Uh, Ash Frost and Storm is a super good node. It gives you Ellie, well, it gives you 40% Ellie damage and 12 all res. So something that's pretty nice. Oopsies. Moving into the 100 tree, we're pretty much just filling in life nodes for the most part. There's like a bunch of life nodes to fill up with an RF tree. And then 101 plus. I'll take that off. 101 plus, you can see we're filling in jewels. Uh, this build gets five jewels, I believe. One, two, three, four, and five. If you don't want to take the jewels, you can just grab more adjacent life, so that's something to take into account. I also picked up heart and soul because it really does help with the mana cost especially when you're running like arcane surge to try to keep up your <clears throat> to try to keep up your uh, uh da 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 searing uh why can't i think of it searing touch searing scorching gray there that's, that's what i meant to say scorching gray sorry about that boys i'm a little dented right now i got super hungover okay to talk about one more character, uh, I want to talk about the Glacial Hammer character. Now, Glacial Hammer, for the most part, has been a meme, and I'm sad that it has been a meme for so long. So, finally, they have basically changed it so skills now have flat damage, right? So, if you look at Glacial Hammer, you'll see that it gives um, 75 to 113 cold damage against chilled enemies. Well, there's this weapon that people don't really use. It's called Frost Breath, and it says attacks with this weapon deal double damage to chilled enemies. So that flat amount gets doubled, right? On top of Frost Breath, and Berserker gives flat fizz. So that's pretty interesting. And because it's a unique weapon that's pretty easy to acquire, you could even dual wield these. I thought that was pretty interesting. So this was a dual wield Berserker tree. Um, that I decided to build and then I found out I'm pretty sure that this was Did I end up scrapping this? I'm pretty sure I actually scrapped the whole bottom part. Oh I don't think this one saved properly Hmm I may have to redo this one and not give you guys this. Why did it not save? Give me a sec. Let me see if I saved it in the other tree No, this one's not here. Sorry boys, you don't get the glacial hammer one. I'm pretty sure that I dropped this whole bottom section and I instead went up here um, because Pain Forger is pretty crazy. Yeah, I did. I have to... Hmm, unlucky, boys. Sorry about that. No Glacial Hammer. Because I, I ended up coming back up here because I found out it's much better to get the crit over here than the crit down here. And you get access to Pain Forger and uh, you get down here. Where is it? blacksmith's clout which is super super good anyway though um that's three builds for you guys so no glacial hammer i'll try to update it tomorrow so i can get it for you guys but for now this is all i got remember if you want to look at these characters you are going to need to um update it i'm going to post the pay spin so you have to open it with path of building you cannot just click it make sure you have an updated path of building or it's not going to work 
Um, so with that being said, hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. If you got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care.